All right, so welcome back to my AK update. As you can see, if you saw the first video, I've made a handful of changes. I have had a couple of issues, and I kind of just want to discuss them with you guys. So obviously you're in the loop, I guess you would say. I am going to go over the entire AK, even some of the stuff that I went over previously, and then some of the changes that I've made in the past. We'll work our way from the back to the front, and then we'll discuss some of the challenges, issues, and things that I have overcome, and things that I have not overcome. First things first, the stock. I still do enjoy this stock. The only thing is it's not the most sturdy thing in the world. I appreciate that it has the adjustment for the comb and an easy adjusting stock for length. I have the thicker butt pad on it just for comfort reasons. All in all, it's, you know, it's not a bad stock. Like I said, it's not the most sturdy thing in the world. So it does lock both closed on its own. And then to open it, it doesn't lock on its own. You have to press the button underneath. Again, I don't know if that's just a factory defect or if the spring's just not strong enough, but that's just how it's supposed to be. It did rattle a ton. So I put a piece of Velcro on the inside and now there's almost no rattle from there. I have the same grip on here, or I did make some changes. You'll see I wrapped it in paracord. Real giga brain idea, because uh, if I want to get to the screw, I can't, so I have to take the paracord off. I don't know what convinced me to do this. I like the red on it, but I'm going to have to take that off because it's getting a little wobbly. I got to put some uh, thread lock on there, some Loctite blue. I did change out the fire selector to one with a index finger panel on it, just so I could change it from the side so I don't have to take my whole hand off the grip if I needed to. I threw on this cool dot sight by Primary Arms. I don't know how much this dot sight cost. It does have 11 different illuminations and it's got those special caps that you can adjust on and off. So you take them off, you can adjust it with the cap and then put it back on. It came with my KWA F90. It's also got this cover up front. That's nice because in case it ever gets shot with BBs, the cover gets damaged and not the sight. I know a lot of people are complaining, or every time that I show them this, they don't like how I put the sight on the dust cover because it doesn't hold zero, but it's airsoft. The recoil isn't that heavy, and it does hold a decent zero for me. And like I said, again, it's airsoft. It'll be fine, and I like the look of this guy so far. I threw one of these fat knobs on here, and of course the chrome bolt. I actually really like the chrome bolt. I think it's really nice. I also got this really stubby 4.1 inch SLR handguard. I think it's awesome, it's really cool. Will I keep it like this? For a while, for sure. The reason that I changed out the large one that I had is because I actually kind of wish that I purchased an AK-74U. I don't know why I didn't, I purchased a full-sized AK, which is fine, but I always wanted something a little bit more short, a little more compact and I decided instead of buying an AK-74U, which I would like to in the future, and I'll show you why, especially when Z, uh, VFC comes out with their AK line, if they make one. But I'll definitely go over another reason why I got the shorter one in just a second. And then, of course, the oil filter suppressor. It also has a tracer unit on the inside, which is really cool, but you got to take it apart to get to the tracer unit. Now, a couple issues that I've had recently. In the old video, I mentioned that this GHK gas blowback airsoft AK was pre-2019, which means that the quality control was better than the ones that are out now. I've recently noticed some major problems while putting this on, as well as prior to putting it on with some people that I was speaking to in the heavy recoil discord. The receiver... I originally thought was fine. Some guy had mentioned that the receiver appeared to have a finish on it that looked post 2019. I have no idea. I'm colorblind to begin with and I don't know enough. This is just from what I was told. I didn't think that was the case. I had the longer variant of uh, SLR handguard and it always had like a slight down pitch to it. But when I got it, it looked like the guy had I bought this aftermarket. 
it looked like the guy had just ran the crap out of it into the receiver, and it was like, the aluminum was like, peeling. So I assumed that he just did a terrible job installing it, and it was the handguard. The guys had recommended that I go with a shorter one, because sometimes a shorter handguard will make it appear, even if there is a downward tilt, that the downwards tilt isn't that, or as prominent. But I still figured that it was the handguard. Turns out it wasn't. I think I lied to you guys, and I don't think this is a pre-2019 GHK AK. I know back then they still had some quality control issues, but now it's really like potluck, and a lot of the time you really do get issues in the receiver. So there seems to be a slight downwards pitch. Going forward, when I installed this, I didn't put it in any Loctite. I just wanted to make sure that I installed it correctly and things were working just fine. I went out and shot off an entire clip. And unfortunately, I lost the two grub screws that go into the bottom side of the front sight. Now I could just grab some more at the hardware store. However, you're wondering why the sight stays on so well. For now, I just doubled up on some, don't do this, but I doubled up on some O-rings in the back just to press it up against the front panel. And now it stays pretty dang sturdy. So that's pretty cool. I'll just get some more grub screws. Another way that I realized this was tilted downwards was I went to go throw a muzzle on the inside of here. And the muzzle was a fat one. And it would have fit perfectly on the inside of the handguard. And it would have sank, I guess, like three quarters of the way down and just stuck out a little bit. However, unfortunately, muzzle didn't fit because it's canted downwards and the barrel is facing straight. So it actually started to push up in and against here. So I tried to file these down a little bit and it still didn't work. So I just, you know, kissed that goodbye. I threw a small barrel extension on there and then I threw the oil can suppressor on the front. I don't know if I'll keep it. I kind of like the oil can suppressor. I think it just looks goofy. And again, it's airsoft. So it's not necessarily about function all the time. Sometimes it's just, you know, how you like it. But the problems continue. Right now, I have a hop unit in here. I have the TNT hop unit, and I have one of these CNC machined loading docks for the BBs. I'm not going to take it apart just because I've noticed that YouTube demonetizes videos anytime that you open up a replica. So I'm going to show you the part that I purchased. This is the uh, 3D printed aluminum hop-up unit, TDC hop-up for the GHK AKs from Bob Lee. It's awesome. I personally hate any hop-up unit that has a hop-up wheel that doesn't have a clicking mechanism in it. If they don't have a clicking mechanism, they just lose their zero all the time. This guy's awesome. It's a TDC and I was super stoked about it. But, you know, lo and behold, Nightmare AK. This hop-up didn't fit all the way forwards and you couldn't get these two screws or these two bolts down into the receiver. So I couldn't use it. I threw the other hop unit back in. You know, all was well, no big deal. Still doesn't really hold zero as well as I would like it to. Still would prefer a TDC hop up. I may go out down the road at one point and try and do a little bit of filing on the outside of this guy to make it sit a little bit further down. But that's a project for another day. So I was doing some planking around, whatnot, and then I noticed another issue. I originally had the stock bolt in here and the stock nozzle. All was fine. And then the nozzle started drooping downwards. And I didn't realize when I purchased this, again, I, I just got screwed when I purchased this thing. Luckily I got it for a decent deal. The nozzle was inside of the bolt and the teeth on the bottom of the bolt were sticky, were uh, busted. And the nozzle, one of the forks on it were sticking outwards. So the nozzle would droop down. So I went ahead and I purchased a new bolt. I kind of like the chrome one that I purchased from Samoon. It just looks cool, and I kind of like how it draws your attention to it. It's like the money piece on the AK. That's just my opinion. And then I went with one of the locking end pass nozzles. Here's where the issues continue. For some reason, I don't know if it's the receiver or if it's the bolt. But I have trouble. If I'm holding the AK upright and I rock the charging handle, it returns just fine. Don't ask me why, but I had to at some point. I pointed the gun either down or up if you hold it on its side. The bolt, it's not gonna happen now, watch. 
I swear, it sometimes gets stuck, right? There it is, it gets stuck. I have no idea why it gets stuck. But if you point it downwards, it drops forward. Now I had this problem a couple times and there was no issues, it was still firing. But the nozzle was apparently, wasn't lining into the loading dock correctly. I already think that GHK hop units, like the stock ones and the way they design this is an absolute disaster. It's a mess and I hate the whole thing. It's only given problems to me and I think they could have done a better job. That's just my opinion. But the nozzle was ramming into a portion of the hop unit in a way that it shouldn't have been. And it tore apart a small portion of my nozzle. It's not the biggest problem in the world because I could just get a new nozzle, but I feel like that shouldn't be an issue to begin with, right? So that's another issue. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a stock bolt again, if I can find one. I'm gonna pick up a new end pass nozzle and I already have the uh, upgraded steel hammer assembly in here. I want to get a enhanced blowback unit, some maybe like a stronger spring and a stronger rod to see if that helps. Just drive it forward. I, I don't know. Maybe the other problem could be that not the receiver or the bolt, maybe my dust cover holds a little bit too high. And being that these are two separate aftermarket parts by two separate different companies, even if there's a millimeter off on the bolt, it still works okay with the stock dust cover and the stock receiver. But maybe if you also have a new dust cover, that's also a millimeter or two off. And that now increases the wiggle room between parts. I don't know why this happens. Maybe the other issue, because this wasn't happening originally when I had the AK set up with the larger front guard. Maybe that long rod that goes into the gas tube and again, I'm no AK enthusiast. I don't know what if the terminology is correct. Maybe the rod that goes in the gas tube is so short that when you rack it, it just doesn't hold its alignment. I don't know. I, I can't tell you. I have no idea. Maybe someone has an idea. But yeah, this has been the AK from hell. VFC, please speed it up. <laughs> all in all, I love the AK platform. I like it more than the M4 platform just because I enjoy the rock mag and I like the bolt, the charging handle on the opposite side. I think the reloads uh, capability with it is fun. I like rocking the mag. It's just for enjoyment. Again, I play airsoft, so I don't know, but that's just my take so far. So yeah, this is just the experience from a guy with a negative quality control AK or the AK from your worst nightmare. <laughs>